Welcome, everybody. Uh, no abstract on the website yet. I'm going to talk about transaction not in the way you want it. Last call, um, there's not going to be any commit line. If you're looking for that, last call for leaving. Otherwise, you're going to be introduced into this wormhole by, yes, by me. How the story starts, I just wanted to send a payment to myself. I just wanted to understand what happens when I send a payment to myself, so I got into, yeah, my personal private session of event storming. So I started to look what, uh, what happens when I just uh, send a payment to myself. So I log into the banking system, and unfortunately, every time I do it, this puts me in a bad mood. Reason, well, this is a, this is a common practice in banking system to say like, well, new website. They just change the CSS of the home page of the login screen, and that's it. Then, uh, anyway, we just saw what is the basic of this one. Orange is domain event, verb past tense, but purple, well, purple is kind of interesting. It just uh, makes us free to express ourselves. So the thing is, for uh, good storytelling, for analyzing what could happen in, uh, in a process, well, orange is not enough. We need purple. We need the hotspot. We need to comment. We need to tell what, what, what we need to add. So OK, I'll, and now I'm logged into my banking system. And the first thing I get asked is just, uh, please choose your bank account, which is kind of annoying since I have only one bank account. So I get proposed a list of one. I didn't want to include the screen because the bank was going to be recognizable. Uh, but yes, you have a list of one, please select. It feels kind of annoying. So I felt like, yes, well, I'm going to this website. Uh, maybe I've been doing this error in the past too, but. Uh, Yes, makes me feel like you, you've been doing a good job. But on a meta level, it just uh, I, I couldn't even start to tell a story, and I started to comment the story like uh, an old grumpy man. That's even storming. It works. It just uh, you can't keep your mouth shut once you start seeing the thing like, yeah, no, 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 that's not how it should be. So anyway. I move on, I still want to pay myself, and just uh, I need to select the payee. Well, we have another problem, no auto-completion. I just try, no, no, please, you go to select to another screen, and again, I need to comment. Like, if you make me choose in three, four different screens in order to find the payee, please, not, not. We are in 2017 now, please, not anymore. I am over yet. Then, what else? Well, or you might need to enter the PAI data. And uh, have you ever got into one of these exceptions? Like your IBAN should be exactly this number, number of characters. There's one thing that it really bugs me so much, which is, well, I normally choose the IBAN from a document where it's printed for a readability. I mean, a PDF document, then it is separated. I cut and paste, and then, oh, no exception, or they cut away my last four or five characters. So every time I make a payment, I need to adjust everything in order to make it work. The pro tip, humans don't enjoy removing spaces from IBAN strings. 2016, we still have this problem. Then, what is the next thing to do? You just say, yes, OK, let's do it. Oh. One final round of authentication. So, yes, yes, OK, let me. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh gone. Let me try again. OK, yeah, yeah. So, I have this problem too. And uh, yeah, thank you for making me feel old every, try, every time I try to make, to make a payment. It's just like this, this really drives me nuts. Like uh, this little made in China device. And the other thing that drives me nuts is I know you're a bank. Please don't tell me that you couldn't buy anything more readable because it was too expensive. You're a bank. I'm, a, I'm expecting you to have money to pay something more expensive. Then, but what is the, I do everything. What is the thing that I get? What I get, oh, yes, your payment is going to be processed by, yeah, 17 or 5 p.m. Yeah. Exactly what I wanted. I, I mean, it's, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I want to make this payment. And then, oh, 
yeah, thank you, but we are in an internet time and let's wait. Still can't understand why, well, I know a little on what happens behind the scene, but as a user, I wouldn't like to know what happens behind the scene and I can't find a good justification for, for this one. Then of course, well, something happens, money is gone and that is fine. That's part of the game. I didn't want to keep my money in my bank account. And then what, where is the money going? Money is going exactly here, in this place, which is not in this dimension, is not, is not in my bank account, is not in somebody else's bank account, which would have been me any, anyway in this scenario. So just people, I mean, it's, it's, it's so funny because scientists have spending so much energy trying to solve problems of traveling in time while accountants and bankers solved this problem many years ago. Um, so, just, yeah, sometime later, they don't... No? Better or worse? Okay. <laughs> so it's not this, it's me. <laughs> okay. So, well, sometimes later, well, just a couple of working days, but you don't know exactly what is a working day. Uh, and so, well, I cannot guarantee the time is going to be happening. Uh, then what happens, it just, just credited to the, to the PAI account. But usually, well, the PAI doesn't know about it. And, uh, well, side story. After three years, my bank finally implemented some kind of notification. Well, after three years and quite a few bugs and quite a few uh, remarks and phone calls and so on. Anyway, I finally had the notification working yesterday, so I'm so happy uh, it, it is working. Well, it's a mock notification anyway. Then what else? Well, since I don't, didn't have this, the only thing I could do is just like, well, I need to log into the receiving banking system and so as a PAI, oh, should I really log into the banking system to check if everything goes right? And then I try to log in in the banking system, and of course, yes, of course. And then how do I feel? Well, I feel exactly like this at that time, because it's, it's just like I can't really understand it. Then finally, after writing all the, the new password, and I'm pretty sure I will forget it because I had something else in my mind. I just wanted to check one thing, and then, oh, no, no, you have to do this one be, be behind before that. And then you just, uh, what the hell was I doing? Oh, yes, this. And, uh, and then I didn't have changing the password in mind, so... I was just writing wherever, and I'm sure I'm going to lose the sticky notes or, or the other thing, or maybe I'm just working on a mobile and every, everything like that. So the, that's the situation at the end. And please, please, everybody working on security rules and so on, have a look about context switching, because I am coming to your website with one purpose, and you're asking me to do something different. Then, well, cherry on the pie, you go there, you finally see the payment, and you discover that the payment is not exactly what you wanted, because in some cases, well, especially international stuff, you have these ghost fees in, in some cases. Well, I made my calculation. I counted the numbers. That's a great result. 13 events, 14 hotspots, what the whatever. You, just, just a great result. And then, well, what's the tune in, uh, in banking? Oh, we are going to be disrupted by fintech. That is the problem. So how do I feel at the end of the transaction like this? Well, I feel more or less like this. If you remember the movie, I feel like... Uh, this, I feel I'm going to find where you live. I'm going to change your main door lock every end of the month <laughs> when you're carrying bags <laughs> and it's raining <laughs> for security reasons. <laughs> and now you cannot discuss with security reason. It's just like, oh, what, what did you do that? Well, for security reason. And just, uh, and just trumps everything. No. Okay, that was the intro about me. Uh, I have a bad attitude with bad software. I'm running my little company, Avanz Coperta, and uh, I'm making a mess with sticky notes and give it a name. And uh, then it, this is the even storming the thing that I've been doing in the last two or three years in the domain-driven design field, but not only. <laughs>
The, the thing I want to talk about now is just how the two things get together. So let's get back to the wormhole and to the original title of this, um, of this talk. It's just, uh, what is the problem with that? It's just, uh, the problem is just that we think that we know what transactions are. Uh, we are in the domain-driven design community. We, we think we know bounded context, then we don't realize there is another bounded context which is not before two, between two competing uh, domains or a portion of the, of the problem space. It is us. It's the fact that the really specific term transaction is then ambiguous. We don't realize how ambiguous it is because whenever you, we say transaction, we think like, oh yes, we, it, it has to be consistent, uh, we need to use a database transaction and so on. No, that's actually not the point. I didn't say database transaction, I just say transaction. A transaction is, is a human activity, an act of process, an instance of transacting. Uh, a communicative action of our activity involving two parties or things that can reciprocally affect or influence each other. I don't know if you've ever been doing stuff like, uh, yeah, uh, paying for a big load of drug with the uh, um, Russian mafia or Mexican mafia, but if you do that, you just put stuff in a bag and then you have the money in another bag, you have your, your guys behind uh, pointing guns with, with the, uh, to, to the other guys, and this is your transactional context. Then you, you, you open the bag, okay, it is money. The other guy is just checking the dog. Mm, mm, yeah, good. Okay, so if anything goes right, you close the transaction and you go safe home. This is a transaction. If something goes wrong, yeah, bloodbath, usual stuff. You've seen it in the movie. Of course, we software guys don't do exactly that, but yes, but this is a protocol. We have a unit of work and something is happening inside that. But when it comes to the banking transaction, the thing is, it looks like, like something different. Looks like there are two parts of the space. That's a very smart idea, trying to use the laser. No, yeah, actually you can, can see it. There is something here which is, oh yes, everything is transactional here. And here, this red thing, what do you think it is, this red thing? It is me. It is me that I, I had the money on day one. I didn't have the money on day two and three, and I had my money back on day. How, how can, can you talk about transactional consistency? Where's my money on day two? I don't have my money. It's from me to me. I don't see my money everywhere. It is somewhere over there. No. So the thing for me is just uh, in many processes, we have this idea of keeping this under control. No, but the whole is not transactional. We already know about it. If you are in this conference, it's totally no surprise. We, we, know, we, we had the UDIS talk that was talking about uh, something similar, and we know the notion of eventual consistency. But it's not eventual consistency that I, will, that I want to talk about. I'm actually worried about one more little thing, which is this one. The user is part of the transaction. I am this little red thing that is passing across the time and space, which is left in an inconsistent state for a couple of days. And my problem with, with this one is just, uh, it's not my banking system. I can change bank, no problem, or I can use a password manager. But the problem is, as a professionist in software development, I realize that we have a blind spot on this. We are not good in spotting these problems. We don't think about them. So let's try to storm on a given different problem. So let's, now we, we are going at the process design level, so I'm assuming I'm just focusing on a specific smaller process, and this is our toolkit. Well, the user is just having uh, some um, pressure from the real world and some information visible, which is making him take a decision. That's our decision, command, call it the way you want, blue. Everybody could agree it's blue. This decision gets into the system. If it just gets turned into reality, then there's gonna be an event, and uh, it will be translated into real, uh, readable model, readable data here, or it might be triggering some policy here. 
uh, put in another more readable way, that's more or less what are we expecting to see. Um, so let's try to see a real, realistic process from uh, yeah my my company. I just uh, it, it's cheaper so so that I don't have to sign NDAs. So. Uh, we have somebody that bought a ticket for a, for a training class, and uh, well, they, they cannot come. So we have a refund request received. Some some guys uh, sending us an email, an email telling like, I'm really sorry for some reason I could not show up at this training class. So actually, it happened also during the workshop, but it was confirming my expectation. How how do you model a situation like this? Well, usually, that's a typical developer implementation. We have a refund policy, which tells that if you're uh, entitled for a refund, mean, meaning that you just cancel your participation more than seven days before the class, we issue the refund. We go on PayPal, you get the money. Can you see the problem? What is the problem? Maybe that's one thing, but no, actually, oh, well, it's in the PayPal, so it's not out, out of my responsibility. No, the problem is, is in our uh, blind spot. Let's try to see with a different heuristic. I would like to see for a user these three things. At every step, what do I have? What do I know? How do I feel? Let's try to see it in practice. I have a refund request, receive it, and I'm the customer. So what do I have? At this moment, I have a ticket. What do I know? I'm not going to use it. And how do I feel? I feel worried because, uh, yes, we have something on the website telling what is our refund policy, but uh, yeah, it's a weird situation. And I actually didn't buy the, the ticket for the, for the refund policy. I, bought it for another reason. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get the money back. I, I mean, I feel partially guilty. And uh, the other thing is just uh, I even feel sorry because, uh, because I don't know. Maybe it would be a problem. Maybe this training, uh, training class is not going to be running because, uh, because of this one. So OK, well, well, we got quite a few information at this level. Then later, well, we have uh, Notification sent to PAI, or put in another way, refund notification received. It just might be a little difference, and sometimes this difference is relevant. But for this time, it's just like uh, more or less the same thing. It's just uh, same mapping. What do I have? Well, a ticket. Well, I don't really know about that, the ticket. I said like I wanted to cancel it. Uh, what do I have? I have my money back. So this this would be great. What do I know? I know that I have my money back. How do I feel? Well, that's interesting. How do you feel like you asked for a refund, you got your money? Well, I feel safe because I have my money. The funny thing feels like uh, I feel worried because I said I'm not going to be able to participate to this class. OK, here's your money, you loser. <laughs> and it's too automatic, it's too efficient and uh, too, too impersonal. And it's funny, because every time we, we, we do this and we, we discuss this with software developer, we always hit this little uh, blind spot. We don't say it. We try to make processes which are reliable, repeatable, and efficient. And uh, when we try to see it in some other way, well, the answer we get is always this one. I am not a user experience expert. That's not my job. I am just a developer. I am part of the development team. This, this is not my problem. No, actually, when we do even storming, when we are storming around the problem together, the situation is slightly different. It's just like uh, everybody is a business analyst. Everybody is a user experience expert. Because what ends up being uh, even storming, the moment you work together on, on, the, same, uh, on the same problem, even storming becomes a platform for self-organization. Just, uh, it's just uh, three, four, 15 people in a room trying to solve the same, the same problem. Think more programming if you want. It's just problem solving together without so many 
roles along the way. Well, you have roles in your company, you, you have some titles, whatever, but the moment you went to a room with the problem on the wall, you're just problem solver. So don't let some, somebody, some anything get in, in the way between you and solving the problem. And more, more than anything, that's, that's a typical mistake of every software developer. Don't assume that, oh, we need to, so we have this problem, so we need to design a piece of software to, to do that. Uh, that's not the thing. No, talk, discover what's, what's behind it. And if necessary, if you don't get any answer from the business, well, let's run an experiment together and see what happens. So we try with a different policy and uh, the real world policy was something more like, like this one. So whenever we received the refund request, we had a, yeah, a person that was uh, actually calling the customer in a friendly way, having this conversation with the customer and then just deciding together what to do. Well, we discovered that we had many more options than just giving the money back. Uh, some reason, well, some people just, yeah, wanted the money back, no problem. Some other people, they said like, oh, look, it, has, it took ages for me to get a ticket. Uh, can you just keep the money and reuse the money for the, for the next one? I, I have an impediment for this date, but I would like to keep it. I don't want to go back to my, to my HR department. And, uh, or, uh, well, I can't come, but I have a friend that would like to, to get the ticket. Well, perfect. So. Uh, that conversation opened up things. But in general, the thing is, talk to the business. The business is more sophisticated than, than one rule. And uh, the, other, the other thing that, uh, that we had in some cases was, uh, okay, this is the rule, but as a personal favor, we could do that. And the exception feel like, great, actually Amazon is doing a lot of stuff like this. So let's see how is it working, given our little heuristics. Like, uh, we have a call ended, the refund is chosen, then how the customer feels. What do I have? Well, I have an agreement. Well, it's not yet the money, but I have the agreement. What do I know? I will have my money back. I just talked with a nice person, so not bad. How do I feel? I feel safe, because I just talked with a nice person that, that told me, yes, we will do it, no problem, you, you have the money. And I also feel relieved, because they said, no problem, I don't feel guilty for canceling my participation, no problem. And uh, so, looks like not bad. On our side, well, you can, the tip is, you can model multiple users in this, uh, in this way, in every step. At the end of the call, how do we, what do I have? Well, we have an agreement with the customer, so we have a duty, something, something to do uh, with them. And uh, what do I know? Well, actually, uh, I know the decision, and I should know the sales situation. And how do I feel? How do I feel actually depends on sales, because if, uh, if that was a critical, uh, seat to run the training class or not, that would have been dangerous. Or if we are in safe area, if everybody's knocking on our door to sell, uh, to, to buy this, this ticket, then, it, then it's actually no, no problem. But uh, that's a part that might be a little bit mysterious. Is there anything that we can do about it? Actually, yes. Whenever we have something, or maybe it's a decision about the, what is the strategy to adopt during the uh, the phone call, well, we can do something about it. Usually, it's just uh, making those decisions, those choices easy. So in this case, well, here's exactly where the read model comes, uh, becomes useful. Just uh, what do we need to know in order to feel safe? We need to know what is the price paid for the ticket. We need to know how the sales are going. We need to know what is the minimum number of participants. And we need to know how many days are left for the, for the sales. That is the important thing. The read model is not just exposing the data. It's a decision support tool. It's just a, a user has a problem at the specific point of, of the flow. Can we make this problem simple? Can we make, can we make this problem so trivial that it's going to be almost non-existent? That is the role of the uh, of the read model. 
So in general, the big, the big shift for me when, when I started to design systems using, using this approach is just like, I don't care what is the data I have in the database. I will find a way to find it. But I'm focusing what is the problem of this person at the given moment. Can I make it simpler? If yes, I will. Then, of course, we also do this, this part. But we, we just start, we, we choose the refund. So we, our policy is when we say that we refund the people, we actually re refund them. And that's interesting because in many cases, well, actually, it, it is still a choice, kind of obvious, but uh, let's make it explicit because, uh, yeah, you never know. Uh, in this case, it doesn't sound so smart to make it, uh, to make it explicit. But in practice, you want to know when they are all the decision, the key decision point in your, the business of your company. Then, yes, we pay them. For the user, what is the result? Notification sent to the payee. So what I have, my money back. Good, I receive it. What do I know? I have my money back and no problem. So everything is OK. How do I feel? Well, I, I am safe. I now I have my money. Well, it, it is on PayPal. It's good enough. And uh, grateful, relieved. I talk with the people. I had my money almost immediately. Sounds like, sounds like a good job. So yes, a lot better. And of course, we need also to free up the seat. So when the refund is chosen, we have another policy that says, like, OK, that's free up the ticket. We don't have zombie participants to our trainer. If somebody's waiting, we need to free it up. What is the problem? Well, we still have some problem here that uh, we are still a little, little uh, blind. One of the problems is uh, we don't have an automated payment yet. And uh, so we needed the decision first. So the trigger was not the request from the, uh, from the customer. It was our decision to refund that, that was probably triggering the process. But we are a small company. We don't have the automation over there. We didn't have so many refunds to justify the expense for the automation, so we have a human. And uh, what is the problem for the, for the human at this, uh, this place? Well, humans take coffee breaks. Humans take uh, holidays, take a day off, or uh, actually the person making, making the payment was working only part-time. So yes, we're making the payment, but well, Actually, we are queuing up the payment when somebody is, um, is available. And here we're facing a lot of another interesting little problem, which is uh, there is uh, whenever we create an expectation, there is an implicit deadline. You told me you were going to pay me. I'm expecting you to pay me within a given amount of time. And uh, this implicit deadline, maybe two days, maybe one day, maybe five minutes, because you said, I'm going to do it immediately. And then, then you, you just go to the restroom, and then you forget about it. You start another, another thing. Then, then this is gone. But this implicit deadline, in terms of the expectation of the user, it is there. And uh, well, good thing, we can model it with domain events, too, and see what happens when we try to mess up with sequence of events. So, if we pass this implicit deadline before the refund is issued, well, the situation for the user is slightly different. What do I have? I promise. What do I know? I haven't been refunded. How do I feel? Well, kind of worried. Should I remind them? I mean, you told me you were going to send me back my money, but you didn't. And it, I, I don't really like reminding people that they, they, they have to send me money. So this is putting the people in a pretty annoying situation. So really, not good. But the thing is, well, we were able to visualize it. Unfortunately, that was the example we had with, uh, uh, with PayPal, which, is, which has a good property of sending, well, immediate notification. If we had normal banking instead, like uh, the refund is chosen, we go to the refund policy, and uh, well, that, that means also you have to wait till Friday due to our part-time uh, contract. So the person go, goes on the banking system, enters the payment, the payment is in the bank, and, uh, whoa, wormhole. 
that's where we are. We're getting exactly there. So at this level, refund chosen, implicit deadline passed, the thing is, I promise, what do I know? I haven't been refunded. How do I feel? Worried. But now, I logged into the banking system, and I discover the promise is unfulfilled. What do I know? I haven't been refunded. How do I feel? Well, I remember how I felt. I feel like this, because I even have to log in into the banking system to discover that I haven't been paid. I'm, I'm, I'm piling up crap on top of an existing crap. So when we talk about this composite modeling, then uh, one, of the, one of the weird things is just uh, we are not totally in control of the whole flow. We can control the mood of something, but uh, there's something which is part of the mood uh, that, is, uh, that is not in our control, but it's part of the user experience. I mean, if a user is a customer, is pissed off by something that is the banking system, but this is triggered by something which is our policy, well, they are not going to be entitled to distinguish uh, that, oh, this feeling that I have is just coming from the banking, not from the company. So, well, let's, let's make a difference. They won't. They're going to be pissed off no matter what. But that's not the problem. What the thing that I wanted to, to talk about was the fact like, that we might have a good solution, a good tool to play with that. So the thing is, if we start, if we visualize the sequence of events, we can start to play with this and try start asking ourselves those little three little questions, like uh, what do I have, what do I know, how do I feel at every step? And this is just uh, changing the way people might think about the process. It's not, it's not that. It's not really groundbreaking. No, it's nothing new. It's just uh, I haven't been invited in anything. It's just uh, nothing really special. It's just uh, I tried to find a way to make this uh, thinking easier given, given a platform. So, it's, it's more about removing impediments to this, uh, to this type of thinking. This is relevant because uh, if, if there is one single factor of, uh, to determine the success of a given, uh, given project, it's not that much about performance. Performance is one of the things that we like to see as a critical factor, but it's mostly the user experience. And user experience is not exactly what we would like it to be. So when it comes to what we do in, in, uh, in even storming, it started to become something uh, really different. Not exactly a software development activity, but uh, a process of awareness around what is the software that we are, build that we are building. So removing impediments like roles, processes, contracts. Have you ever worked with a service design company or a user experience company? We already de define everything. Here's the, oh, we don't call them specification anymore, but by, by the way, here are the wireframes. That's it. And uh, they are going to do that, and you're just going to do that. Or maybe you have even the cascade of, uh, yeah, uh, web developer, but web designer first, a user experience designer, a user interaction designer. And uh, everybody's adding a bit, but in a different room before a software and space limitation as, a, as an impediment. No, the thing that we that ended up looking at is just uh, we have this, this blind spot. We are not really good in seeing these things, but uh, we cannot really totally delegate. If uh, we have strict roles around solving the problem for, uh, of uh, creating good solutions for, uh, for users, then it's going to be a losing game. So let's shrink it up a little. Conclusion. Thing number one, our perception about uh, transaction is, uh, no, transaction, we, we still need acid properties, we still need uh, local consistency, that's fine, I'm not, not arguing with that. But the thing is, in the large scale, there is no consistency. And there's absolutely no point in pretending that we have one. We have a continuous Tension to reconciliation. We're going to get to a point where I don't owe you anything, or you get exactly what you paid for. That's the next state of equilibrium. But every step in this tension 
it is relevant. What we call transaction in a known software world, in fact, are processes and uh, with variation, with, uh, with rules and intermediate state, and some of them cannot roll back, cannot be rolled back. Like uh, if uh, it happened once with a training class that uh, we decided to cancel the training class and we're, we were just tweeting like this date is no longer coming and then we received an email that was yeah written at the same time, we're gonna buy four tickets for this training class. And this tweet, tweet could not be rolled back. What is, how can I roll back something like that? We ended up doing, yes, okay, let's cancel it anyway and, and reorganize it. It's totally okay, but thinking all in terms of strict transaction is not gonna help you. What might be helping you, because it's actually not really that visible, is trying to make this global state visible. And for global state, I mean this one. Users are part of the state. Users, at the given moment, they know something, they have something, or maybe they have something and they don't know it, like, like when you receive a bank payment without any notification. And these little friction are important. Like, uh, you might even feel the need to tweak the time and reaction in order to provide a better experience, and that might be very important in areas that really make the difference. The other thing in, in this process is just like, uh, well, intermediate steps matter, and it might be really relevant. Well, to be explored, to be analyzed, to be tested, and so on. How do we, well, a way to, to see that, sometimes it's just like, at every step, we might be saying like, okay, we have this one, that's the money we have, that's the number of people registered, and, and so on. So, managing the progression, what is the global state uh, over there. It's not a specification anymore, it's just a tool for reasoning. We're just trying to make the topic of the conversation visible because somebody can see it and somebody else cannot. So we, you need to bring it to, uh, into light in order to have a facilitated conversation around it. And that's the part that, that may be surprising. Mood and feelings are part of the global state. If I have a software which is uh, piecing off users every time they use it. I, in, in my company, I ask everybody else to put on headphones when I'm going into the banking system, just because I don't have a separate room. It, it just, that, that's not absolutely good, uh, doing, a, doing a good job. But, well, we actually don't look at it, but it might be not so hard, just, oh, yes, at this moment, oh, you told me that, but then it did that. Of course I'm going to be pissed off. But if this is hard to see, then, then it's harder, then we don't do it, then it's somebody else's responsibility. Then, well, then another thing that was a part of the discoveries of the, of the last year, maybe that's a little bit more than, than a summary, it's just like, uh, well, the good thing that we discovered about e even storming is just like it enables cross-perspective conversation. So the fact that we start from the main events, the fact that we are describing the behavior of a big system in terms of narratives, in terms of storytelling, well, means that we can add every connotation we want to the conversation. And it's not like being fuzzy, it is just that we create the notation along the way, in an incremental way, enabling exactly the conversation, the best conversation that could happen. So, as a peach, I might say like, uh, well, even storming is my pizza. Uh, meaning that uh, you can add your toppings. You start with uh, domain events uh, along the timeline, that's gonna be your tomato and mozzarella. Then you can add, yeah, whatever you want, with the notable exception of database tables and pineapple. <laughs> then, uh, if you want to see the, the menu of the different version of uh, different flavors of even storming, but there's nothing like official, uh, it's just, yeah, big picture, process design, aggregate discovery, service design, we did value stream mapping, we did retrospective, we even did the large scale organization design. I even studied uh, history with my daughter, but y you can actually do whatever you want because timelines and the, uh, and the sequence of events are just the building block of every story. And I don't know what's gonna be uh, 
useful for you. The thing is just uh, forget orthodoxy, forget uh, we need to do commands before the aggregate and so on. No, you can make experiment. It could lead you to good conversation and could lead you to better, to better discovery. Unexpected places. The thing is, we would love to solve problems in a technical way, but the moment we open the box and try to understand what the problem is, we have no luxury to choose what the problem is going to be. Anyway, I would feel like I would like to solve this, this problem. The other good thing that we discover is just uh, after a while, uh, you don't have to, to solve the problem given your role, you just try to solve the problem as a team. If in, in one way, this is just uh, agile as it was intended, scrum as it was intended, like uh, put people in the same room and then you are providing your skills, your ability, your nuances, it, not your role, not your title. You're providing your contribution to the solution. It's about contribution and insight, not roles. And uh, to tell it to software architects, because yes, I, I, I still consider myself a software architect. I still love to find the solution to the problem in a way that could be coded. Uh, I would say that's not exactly the thing. I would say like, we are problem solvers, not problem pickers. And just if the problem doesn't have a solution which is branded like, uh, yeah, SQRS, even storming, even sourcing, or, or anything good technical. Well, let's find a solution anyway. Just try to understand the problem, and well, this round is gonna be human. Next round is gonna be software. Next round, again, is gonna be user experience. But just solve the problem. This is what our work is overall. So, I have nothing more to add to the presentation. I'm totally open for, for questions. And uh, if you want to know something more about event storming, probably the best entry point is eventstorming.com, which is just pointing to all the other links. And uh, if anybody is worried about it, I am still working on the book. It's, it's going to be finished right after Game of Thrones is going to be completed. So. <laughs> It's beginning to become clear that there are three parties to a lot of important transactions. There's a hidden criminal enterprise on the other side of the world. And I think it's going to affect the way we, we design these things. Can you comment on that? Well, <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you had the name in mind. And I, wanna, I don't want to say this, this name because I, I might be uh, afraid for my life. Um, but the thing is, the problem is still the same. We are just looking in a way that makes another type of solution more, uh, more natural. And uh, well, to be honest, the, the, <laughs> the evil empire is making, uh, is making uh, the job of many of us uh, uh, more, uh, more profitable. Because uh, yeah, we, we, we clean up some, uh, uh, some crap along the way, and that, that's actually a uh, good thing for the, for the pocket. But uh, in general, the, the, thing, the thing I've discovered is, is just uh, it is hard to see things in, in a different way if we don't have nothing to look at. And uh, the moment we look at things in a different way, something becomes relatively more obvious. Uh, or then you need to, to make just the extra mile to make it less obvious for somebody else. But the thing is, after you see that, then, oh, what about this one? It's, uh, it's actually a path of a continued discovery. I don't want to add too many toppings on top of the pizza, but looks like every new recipe is, is kind, of, uh, uh, kind of good. And uh, the thing is, we have been looking to the, to the project, to the, to the software that we were writing, too much as software only, without uh, realizing that we are trying to help somebody. We are trying to make somebody uh, go home earlier uh, on, uh, on in the weekends, uh, feel uh, feel safe, not feel stressed about making uh, a wrong decision. I'm actually trying to find a way coding in event sourcing, CQRS, designing uh, sketches, whatever, to make somebody have a, an easier uh, experience as a customer, as a user, as an employee in the company. It's just uh, there's no need to, to deal with unnecessarily complicated software. I know complicated software is cheaper, but uh, that's not 
that's not the goal. So I actually wanted to make a comment on the, the user experience side of things. So if you're a company that um, is ethical, has your customer's best interests at heart, then a lot of this stuff makes sense. Um, there's actually an anti-pattern to this, and it's called dark patterns. Uh, it's basically um, user experience designed specifically to impede people from doing you know, the thing that works, well, yep. basically. So it's not a question, it's just a comment that I wanted to make. Uh, well, uh, just even, even some, some other gray area about uh, some bad user experience in, just in order to make you feel great, grateful when we relieve you from that pain. And uh, well, the thing I, I wanted to say two things. One, I don't want to substitute myself to user, uh, to user experience designer. I've been working with them. They're, they're doing a fantastic job when they are around. We have a problem on the, on the boundary because uh, um, yeah, they're still not, we still haven't found the perfect way to, uh, to collaborate. The thing that I'm, that I'm worried about is uh, when the right people is not around, the right choices are not made and uh, the impediment is not, is not there. Uh, the, on the other side, you just, uh, well, now I might get the, the real deep meaning of this, uh, of your question. If, uh, if you get into the dark pattern for user experience, you try to do evil things, yeah, maybe you don't want to have the rest of your team to know the real reason why you're doing this stuff. And, uh, well, I still would like to know it and eventually leave because of, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not that evil. I don't like, uh, I like feeling happy because I did good software that made somebody happy or uh, safer or, uh, yeah, if I can choose, well, I always choose the, the, the best option. So, but that might be a good reason why, why not to show. But I would say this is probably minority. Uh, Stupidity is a much powerful force than uh, a plot of uh, people doing dark patterns. And, uh, yeah, if I can weigh the two things, is yeah, 90% stupidity and the other one. Or lack of budget or pressure, you, you know the thing, that people coming, going, nobody cares. Actually, pride is probably the good driver. The moment you're together trying to see what we are building, some bonding gets, uh, uh, gets established, like oh, we are trying to make this stuff well together. And it's, like, uh, and it's just like cooking, just you have guests, oh yes, uh, you were coming last minute, I just take this pizza from the fridge. No, no, I just made this pizza. I, 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 I prepared the whole stuff and I've been choosing this tomato and it's good and I'm gonna look at you while you're eating and you gotta tell me that it's good because I'm proud of it. That, that's a totally different approach. You're gonna take care of this, this thing if you are, part of it and proud of it. But yeah, it doesn't always happen. Market is big and uh, you can choose.